By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I have some beautiful old school magic for you. We're going to look at two alpha decks because this is an alpha 40 league match. And that means that we'll be playing according to the Alpha 40 League rules. Now, if you're curious what that is, what that entails, here you see a nice screenshot of the digital rulebook. In the description below, you can find all the details. So if you want to know more about this format, check the description below and maybe we'll see you play some Alpha 40 League in the future. And today we are looking at two beautiful decks. One deck is uh, black, it's red, and it's got a really cool Dwarven Warriors in it, which doesn't surprise me because it's piloted by the Dwarven Warrior himself, Erwin. And he's taking on Ron, and Ron, of course, is the often troll king. But strangely enough, there are no often trolls in your deck. Oi, what's that all about, Ron? Where are the trolls? This is it's kind of, I didn't expect to see this, but it's still a beautiful deck. I've kind of called it five color good stuff for the simple reason that it has all the colors in it. And it's got an alpha black lotus. Wow. So, I mean, that's going to be super exciting. I don't think I've... I've I've, I've had that in a, a match video yet, you know, an alpha black lotus. So I'm really looking forward to that. No idea if it appears, of course, but with a 40 card deck, chances are pretty, pretty high. Now, before I jump into the deck decks, I would just like to point out that if you want to skip that section and go straight to the action, it is kind of easy. Again, check the description below. There you'll find several timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG games. Click on there take you straight to the games, straight to the action. And as for here, we are going to start with the deck deck and I'm gonna look at the deck of Erwin first. Like, let's take a look at his black and red brew. And here we see the deck of Erwin and the first thing that really stands out to me is that beautiful Dwarven Warriors, that altar there with that ax drawn on it, altered by Douglas Schuller himself. And the Dwarven Warriors, it can actually be relevant in this deck because you can tap it and you can make any creature with power two or less unblockable and when we're looking at the deck here of Erwin we're seeing a lot of two powered and lower creatures we see the often trolls we see the uh, drudge skeletons we see the uh, the orcs here and uh, there's actually a lot of regeneration in this deck as well now that I'm looking at it you know the drudge skeletons and the often trolls both have regeneration so it's going to be quite hard for the opponent to get rid of them unless of course they have <laughs> swords to plowshares and they happen to know that Ron's packing a couple of those uh, but besides that, I mean, regeneration is a tough cookie to crack. We do see some removal in the deck of um, Erwin as well. We see two beautiful fireballs. We see three lightning bolts. I'm really liking that fork. We see two disintegrates. Actually, there's quite a lot of direct damage in this deck. And then we also see, uh, you know, a, a single terror in there. I think that animate dead can do a lot of work. You know, first you kind of burn his biggest creature. Then you get it back with your own animate dead. It's kind of a, a dream scenario for Erwin here. And... You know, when we're looking at this deck, I guess it's just a classic kind of creature aggro deck. You know, you're going to play your, your cheaper creatures, your your orcs, your dredge skeletons, your often trolls. And then later in the game, you've got your single sing, your vampire to maybe like finish off the game. But of course, there is a lot of damage. So even if Erwin is like on the backbone and he's kind of forced to use his dredge skeletons and his often trolls to block everything that, that Ron is throwing at its way then at least he can rely on his direct damage to kind of finish the game. And, and remember, this is a 40 card format. So if you're only playing with 40 cards and uh, seven of those cards are burn spells, that is actually quite a lot. And also you can include the fork into that burn package. So eight burn spells, that's like a fifth of the deck is burn. And then I'm not even counting in that single drain life that we see here as well next to the terror. So, you know, there's just a lot of aggression here coming from Erwin and now um, let's take a look at the deck of, of Ron and see if he can withstand all that aggression. Let's take a look at his five color good stuff deck. And here we see the deck of Ron. Now I've called it five color good stuff and I guess when you see the picture you kind of know why. Um, he's, you know, he's, he's playing with those cards that you're kind of expected from every color and yes I understand he's only playing with one green card and one black card but in order to restricted cards that a lot of people splash and, and rightfully so because they're just really good. So we've got Regrowth and Demonic Tutor there. I think if I'm looking at this deck as a whole, I don't see a lot of surprises. We see that red package where we see Fireball and three Lightning Bolts. We see the kind of standard white control package with three Disenchants, two Swords and a Balance and that single beautiful Sarah Angel, really beautiful. What I like, by the way, about this matchup is we're going to have Sarah Angel 
versus Sangir Vampire. Remember the deck of Erevin? He's playing a single Sangir against a single Sarah Angel. So I kind of, I love that. I think that's really old school. And then we've got the blue cards, which is quite interesting. We've got a Steel Artifact, which I think is going to be really, really good. Because, um, you know, uh, Erwin is not playing with any enchantment removal, you know. So he can steal whatever artifact. The problem, of course, is now that I'm saying this, Erwin is only playing with a single artifact. That's the Nevenerals disc. So maybe that steel artifact is going to be a dead card in his hand. Nonetheless, if he has it in hand at the right moment and he can steal a tap Nevenerals disc, disc, that is going to be brutal for, for Erwin. Because actually the disc... Is one of his only ways out of enchantments. One of his only ways to kill enchantments, get rid of them, destroy them, I should say. Because you kill a creature, but you destroy an enchantment. He's playing black and red. Remember, this is a format with no sideboards. He cannot board in a red elemental blast. He doesn't have that option, you know? So when he, he has to deal with the steel artifact, or when he has to deal with, even worse, a control magic, he's got no weapons. The only really good weapon he's got against it is an activation of the Nevernerals disc. I actually think talking about control magic, I think it can have a big role in this uh, in this matchup. Two control magics. Um, the reason I'm saying this is, like I said, he's got no enchantment removal. What does that mean? It basically means that control magic is a two for one. He steals a creature. Let's say he steals uh, the Sangir Vampire. That would really be a horror scenario for Erwin, right? Then he has to use a direct damage or some kind of other card to get rid of his own Sangir Vampire. So basically a control magic is setting Erwin up for a two for one. The only good thing that I can kind of guess is that um, although he's playing with all the colors, so even if he steals an often troll, he is playing with a considerable amount of red mana so he can still regenerate the often troll. So anyway, control magic is probably gonna be a pain here for, for Erwin. I think Erwin's best bet is to play really, really quickly. Uh, against Ron, I think looking at this deck, Ron is the slight favorite, and I haven't even talked about the artifacts in this deck. We see quite a lot of artifacts, seven in total, including a beautiful Black Lotus, and I'm so hoping to see it in action today, Ron. Um, yeah, because that's going to be the first time in a match video on the channel that we'll see an actual alpha Black Lotus being used and activated, so that would be really, really a big thing, so I'm really hoping to see that alpha Black Lotus being used. Uh, we also see a Jade Statue. Now, Jade Statue... You don't see it often in other old school formats, but in the Alpha 40 League and in Alpha Beta play, it is such a good card. I've seen it in action. I was really like, I was impressed, you know. In, in core set only, this is the boss. This is such a good card. It is surprisingly difficult to get rid of. It's a 3-6 during combat, so 6 toughness. It's really difficult to beat that with any creature in, in, in Alpha. So, I mean, it is really strong. And I think if Ron would have had more copies, I'm not sure, maybe he does, but when I'm looking at this deck, it would make more sense maybe to play with three Jade Statues and not with the Juggernauts. That being said, Juggernaut is a pretty good card in Alpha 40 League. It's got a place in Alpha 40 League. You don't, for example, have a Divine Offering in Alpha 40. Uh, you don't have, more importantly, a Mishra's Factory for the Juggernaut. And Walls actually see a little bit of play in Alpha 40 League. I was playing in this same tournament and uh, I was playing with the Wall of Air Alpha. So, you know, it does see some play. We also see a Jam Day Tome, of course. When he's got control, he's going to use that Tome to get card advantage, kind of like the deck wants to do that. And uh, we see two Icy Manipulators, which again, very strong cards. They're kind of huge, you know. So, yeah, it's a really good deck. I'm saying Ron is the favorite, but if Erwin can play really, really quickly and kind of burn Ron out, he definitely has chances. So this is the deck of Ron. We've looked at the deck of Erwin. Now let's go to the Alpha Clash. Let's go to the match. Game number one is here about to start. On the right, we have Ron with his five color good stuff deck. And on the left, we've got Erwin who's playing his red and black Dwarven Warriors deck. And the cool thing is, um, you know, the play mat of Erwin, it's completely unique. You do see channel on there, but also you see this soldier with this kind of, you know, this facial like, that's not a magic card. It isn't because it's actually um, it's actually Erwin himself kind of dressed up as a Dwarven Warrior. So that is his face. So it's like a super unique uh, playmat. It's really rare and, and really nice to see. One of a kind, actually. And on the right, we see the playmat of Ron. That also has a story because he's the organizer of the Often Troll Cup, the really big and, and fun tournament held in Leeuwarden every year. And, um, you know, he's got this Icy Manipulator playmat. And as you can see, the Often Troll is drawn inside it. 
by Douglas Schuller himself. So uh, both of these playmats pretty unique. And uh, it looks like Dave started not played out too much. We see two dual lands being played by Ron here. An underground C, and I believe that is a scrub land. And just a basic swamp by Erwin. I'm kind of expecting Ron just to pass turn here. And then perhaps we're going to see an orc or a skeleton on the side of Erwin in his second turn. We'll just have to wait and see. Remember, with Alpha League 40, it is really hard to take a mulligan. Because you can only take a mulligan if you have only lands or no lands. So maybe these players are forced to keep hands that are not ideal. Although, you know, especially the deck of, uh, of Ron is simply a slower deck. Here we see the Orcs, a 2-2 body that is really good at attacking and not so good at blocking. So I'm expecting an attack if it's possible. Here we see another duel from Ron, Taiga. And that is truly a beautiful sight. He's not playing out any creature, so I'm expecting to see an attack here by the Orcs from Erwin. He's going through his cards, attacking here for two, so Ron's going to drop to 18 as expected. And what else can he do here? And he's not playing out another land, by the way. Okay, he is. Okay, that's good to see. So he hasn't missed a land drop yet, and more pressure on the board from his side. So he's got four land now for Ron, so possibly he could play out a Juggernaut. Going through his hand again. I do see, believe I see a Juggernaut on the right. I'm not quite sure. Of course, with the Juggernaut, he can block both creatures. Ooh, it's an icy manipulator. Probably wasn't the Juggernaut then. And there we see a bolt on the life total of Ron. And this is really going great for Erwin. This is what he wants to do. Just get early damage in with his smaller creatures. And then finish it with his uh, direct damage. There we see a Drudge Skeleton. And I think Ron really needs... For example, a control magic here, a land drop and a control magic that would take a creature from Erwin and give him a blocker. And at the same time, he will have one land open to use his Icy Manipulator to tap down one of the creatures. And that is the scenario that happens. He is taking the tapped orc, changing his mind. And oh, yeah, 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 that is a better situation. Then he has the Underground Sea untapped to regenerate. But wait a minute. No, you cannot do that, Ron, because you don't have double blue. So I guess it's kind of a misplay. Looks like Erwin is not seeing it. There we see a Paralyze being played on the Drush Skeleton. So this is actually not possible, right? Because he needs a double blue to cast it, but it doesn't have a big effect on the game. There we see an attack. He's stepping down one of the Orcs, taking two damage, going down to nine. And there is a Bolt. He's going to go to six. Still looking really good for Erwin because, I mean... Ron is already in the single digits, and remember, he's got a lot of burn in his deck. Only one card, it seems. And Ron is kind of slowly stabilizing. Now, remember, if Ron blocks on the Drudge, regenerates the Drudge, the Drudge gets tapped. So that's why the Paralyze works really, really good on the Drudge uh, Skeleton. There's the attack again. He's going to tap down one of the Orcs, going to block, and he has to tap, uh, regenerate. So the Ironclaw Orc taps. And there we see a fireball. And that's... No, it's not game yet. He's on two. Okay. I wanted to say that's game. But it's not game yet. Could have chosen to kill the Drudge Skeleton, actually. But decided not to. And look at that. We see... Oh, a fireball taking on both of the Orcs. So that is going to give Ron a little bit of breathing space. And I guess, you know, when you're Aaron, you're just going to wait until you're drawing to your burn spell. And if you're Ron, you want to make sure you've got at least one counter spell open to kind of stop the burn. Drawing a card for turn. Can Ron still win this? Can he turn it around? It seems unlikely, but he is still alive. Two is not dead yet. Aaron still sitting safely on 20 lives. There we see a gem day tome. So the control game has started passing turn, not using his icy, by the way. I think I would have tapped down a land if I were Ron. I mean, you, you never know. Maybe it helps. You never know. Anyway, he's going to draw an extra card with the gem day tome. This is really the game that Ron wants to play. He's going to find extra cards in hand. Remember, he is playing with counter spells. And this is going to make it more difficult for, for Erwin to kind of decide if he draws into a burn spell, when to play the burn spell. It looks like he's got something here. Maybe it's just a Dredge Skeleton. Maybe it's a Deciding Burn spell. We'll have to see. There's a Drain Life for two. 
There is a counter. No, there's not a counter spell. It doesn't have the counter spell. Oh, I really thought he's playing the counter spell. But this is a win for Airbnb through Drain Life. So he's one game up. And now these players are going to shuffle. And we're going to continue with game number two. Game number two. And here we go. Ron, under pressure, has to win this one if he wants to keep a chance of winning the match. Remember, Alpha 40 League means you can draw on your uh, your first turn when you're on the play. That's what I'm trying to say. So there we see an underground sea. Oh, we see the Alpha Black Lotus into a juggernaut. Oh, beautiful. This is Magic the Gathering for you. And this is a huge problem for Ervin. Needs to see a lightning bolt now to take care of that juggernaut already kind of reaching towards his dice there. There's the attack. Oh, man, this is so painful. Copy artifact. Oh, my God. He can put Ron. I'm sorry. Ron can put Erwin on five and turn the third turn. This is insane. There. Can he do anything? At least a drudge. So he can at least block one. You know, has to chump probably. Well, has to. He can let it go for one turn, I guess. Well, he's going to chump. Okay, makes sense. Going to drop to 10. He needs at least a lightning bolt, needs a shatter, needs something. What can he do? There is another mountain. Come on. Double bolt? Highly unlikely. No, no, no. Well, bolt is an instant. I guess he can still do it. No, no. Okay, wow. What an insane game of Magic the Gathering. This is sick. Oh, my God. I can't believe it. Jezus, Oh, go. Ah, the fish boat. Yeah. Mag ik een keer? Ja, maar een mooie start. Ja. Oh ja, een bier haal ik het. <laughs> okay, so I just wanted to share the original audio with you and kind of show that start of game two because for me, this is kind of like you don't see games like this often, you know. This is something special. Anyway, we're now in game number three. Let's see who's going to win this one. It's 1-1. One, one. Erwin's on the play, with which is really an advantage in Alpha 40 League because you get to draw when you're on the play. He's playing a Drudge Skeleton. Pass turn is single island. There we see a plateau, and Ron is passing. Of course, Ron's deck a little bit slower. We saw that in, uh, in game one, at least in game two. Of course, it was insane because of the Black Lotus. There we see a second Drudge Skeleton and some uh, damage dealt here by Erwin. Ron is on 19, passing turn again. And he's up for two more damage, going to drop to 17. And let's see if maybe Erwin can find an often troll. And there we see Ron dropping to 17. And there's another creature coming. And it's another Drudge Skeleton and another Swamp. So things are looking kind of okay-ish here. For Erwin, I'm saying okay because you're kind of hoping to draw into your orc or often troll to kind of deal some more damage, but this is still good. And there is a jam day tome. Not really great for Ron. Of course, long term it's really gonna help him, but right now he's gotta play some cards to get out from the from the pressure from the combat damage that's being dealt every single turn. Dropping now to 14, three damage. That's a whole lightning bolt worth of uh worth of damage points here for Ron. And is Erwin going to play out anything? Maybe just a fireball for three, for example. Okay, first going to play out another swamp. Remember, he's playing two fireball, two disintegrates, uh, three lightning bolts, and a fork. So it's got quite a lot of direct damage power. Tapping four. What are we going to see here? There is a Nevenerals disc. And of course, the disc is going to work really well with the uh, three drudge skeletons that he can regenerate when he activates the disc. Really an old school um, combo. And there is a disenchant on the Nevenerals disc. So there is an answer from Ron and he's passing turn. The disenchant does mean that he cannot use his gem day tome. Attacking for three, Ron going to drop to 11. What are we going to see next here? 
Can I really see the cards in hand? There he plays a Pestilence. Ooh, Counterspell. Yeah, that's a really important Counterspell here by Ron because that Pestilence would have given him the victory. Very good Counterspell here by Ron. Going through his hand again. What can he do next? And playing a Plains. Tapping four. Okay, there we see a Juggernaut. That's actually pretty okay-ish. A quick bolt on the Juggernaut, which is not too bad because it means that bolt is not coming to the face. An attack for three. He's going to drop to eight. Things are looking really good for Ervin. There we see it off control. Oi, oi, oi. And here you see the reaction by Ron here. Very excited. It's his favorite card in Magic the Gathering. There we see. Of course, he's going to steal the off control. <laughs> oh, yeah. That is typical. That is typical. And uh, this is actually kind of a problem for for Ervin uh, because Ron also has the mana to regenerate the Uftan Troll. I guess he's just going to attack for, you know, with his three skeletons, right? Just at least get two points of damage in exactly. So he's going to drop to six, going to regenerate the Drudge that's getting blocked by the Uftan Troll. And there is a Sengir Vampire playing with a single Sengir Vampire. And is this Sengir going to give him the victory? He can fly over the Uftan Troll. Ron, of course, still being on six. Needs to get rid of some of the creatures or put some blockers on the field. He's going to draw an extra card, it seems. If he does that, I mean, what is he hoping to find? Maybe removal? One of his swords, perhaps? Going to draw a card. The swords would really help him right now. Doesn't have a lot of mana open. For example, he cannot play um, a Control Magic, cannot play a Sarah Angel. Okay, now he can because he hasn't played his land drop yet. Okay, so now that kind of opens up some more possibilities. Ay, yeah, yeah, he's not doing anything, just passing turn. Does that mean that he's got a Swords, perhaps? Attack here. Does he have a Snow? Wow, Copy Artifact Regrowth just wasn't enough here. And Ervin is taking the victory. And there you kind of see that just more of a linear strategy because that is what Aaron was doing, you know, just a lot of dark damage and, and early creatures that can actually get you the result that you're looking for. So this is a win for Aaron here on Ron. And I would just like to thank both players because, you know, this has been an amazing match to watch. Beautiful cards, of course. I really enjoy looking at these Alpha League 40 matches. Both players now going through each other's decks. And I mean, that game number two, that was just, man, that is <laughs> crazy. Let me know in the comments below, man. Have you ever seen a game like that? I don't think so. I mean, Ron, man, thank you very, very much for, for sharing that and, and bringing that to the table. It's just, uh, it's insane. And this was today's episode. Wow, it was a good one. What a beautiful Dex, man. Anyway, thank you very much for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. Please consider subscribing and ring that bell. And if, you're, if you've been here before, please like this video. That really helps the channel move forward. Also, leave a comment. Let me know what you think of these plays and what kind of games you would like to see in the future. Talking about the future, um, you can also support the channel financially and you can do that by becoming a patron via Patreon. There's probably a link popping up right now. The cool thing is you can already support Timmy Talks for $1 a month. All the money through Patreon goes to the channel and you're really helping me keeping this channel alive. And the cool thing is besides just, you know, helping me create more content for you, you can also join our Discord. Um, you can play a game against me if you want to. Uh, and you can also join the special Timmy Talks tournaments because they also organize tournaments to thank my channel members and patrons for their support. So there's quite a lot of stuff happening and a lot of reasons why maybe you would like to join the Timmy Talks Patreon. So if that kind of sounds like something that you would be interested in, please click on that info card and visit the Timmy Talks Patreon page. Talking about all of that, your name will be also mentioned in the end scroll. And um, you know what? Let's go to the end scroll and let's take a look at the fantastic, amazing, wunderbar channel members and patrons of Timmy Talks. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor?
Doctor's finger to somebody, can 